Hello and welcome to step number two of the Mrs. Rudder's Perimeter Crochet Senegalese Twist Hairstyle. In this step, I will be teaching you how to do your crochet braid pattern for this specific look. Now remember, this look is an advanced hairstyle, so you have to know how to do a couple of things in order to achieve this look. First, you have to know how to do Senegalese twist, cornrow braids, as well as crochet braids. If you need any more additional help on these styles, make sure to refer to my website, howtoblackhair.com, for those hairstyling DVDs. Now back to this braid pattern. I will be showing you how to do your crochet braid pattern for this look by showing you the direction of how you have to braid your cornrow braids. Once you braid all of your cornrow braids, along the way you will actually feed one end of each cornrow braid into one another. And I will show you more specifically how that looks. When you're done with your braid pattern, you will only have one tail end of a braid that hangs down. That braid will then be sewn onto the braid to the side of your head with your already prepared weaving needle. In order to prepare your weaving needle, all you have to do is cut off a little bit of weaving thread, put it through the eye of the needle, bring the two loose ends together, and create a knot. That's simply how you prepare your weaving needle, and then after you've done that, I will show you how to sew the tail end of your braid down to your braid pattern to complete your look. And remember, you have to leave out your perimeter hair in order to do your Senegalese twist as well. As you can see, I am almost finished with my braid pattern for the crochet style. The edges of my hair that are braided in individual braids is the perimeter area that will contain the Senegalese twist. The perimeter will not be crocheted. That's why your hair has to be loose to do the Senegalese twist around the perimeter of your head. And then the rest of my hair is cornrow braided, but I've saved my last braid to show you how you have to connect your cornrow braids along the way. So if I tilt my head down, you can see that my braids are pretty much almost finished. And then a little bit as time go on, you will see that in the back, each braid is connecting. So for now, what I'm going to do is finish my very last braid, show you how to connect the braids in the back, and then also how to sew the braid down with your weaving needle and thread. So now I'm just gonna grab a little hair here in the front. This is my last section. I'm gonna pinch a little bit of hair off and begin braiding. Remember, if you don't know how to braid, make sure to refer to my website for further help on how to actually do cornrow braids. So now as I'm nearing the end of my last braid, I'm going to go ahead and connect my previous cornrow braid to this braid here. So now that I've ended this braid, I've braided all the hair that I have for it. I grab the tail end of my previous braid and I place it onto one of the legs of my cornrow and then I continue to braid. This was done for all of the braids you see here that's in the back of my head. So now when you're constantly connecting the braids, you end up with one individual tail end of a braid that hangs down from your last cornrow braid. So I'm just gonna twist the ends a little bit to finish this. So now as you can see, I have one tail end of a cornrow braid that hangs down here. And if you observe from my other braids, each cornrow braid was added onto each one until there was literally one left. Now in order to make sure that your braid pattern is secure and your braids do not unloosen when you're actually crocheting your Senegalese twist, you have to sew down the tail end of your last braid. 
Now, in order to sew it down properly, you want to make sure there are no bulges or that it doesn't come unloose. So instead of sewing this down to this pattern back here or this base back here, you have to sew it next to one of your cornrow braids. That way the braid is very flat when you're actually crocheting your Senegalese twist. So instead of sewing the tail end of your last cornrow braid onto your last cornrow braid, you want to put it in between here so that it lays very flatly. So now I'm just going to push this braid right in between these two spaces here. And I want to make sure that I'm sewing this braid to my last cornrow braid that I actually braided. So use one hand to keep the braid pressed down. You're going to grab your needle and thread and go underneath your last cornrow and then go through the tail end of your last cornrow braid. So you're going to go underneath and then through the tail end of your last cornrow braid. Push the needle through, wrap the string around twice, pull your needle through to create a knot. Once you've created a knot, you're gonna to continue to sew up along until the tail end of this braid is completely secure. So we're going to go over just a little bit. We're going to go underneath this cornrow braid and through the tail end braid that we have here in the middle. Wrap the string around twice. Pull through. So now once you've secured your last knot, you're going to open it up and just tighten it just a little bit more and then you're going to cut the string. It's okay if you have a little bit of hair right as you can see here that hangs down because when you're crocheting it's going to lay very flat against your braid. So now next you're going to snip this off and that completes your actual crochet braid pattern. This is the braid pattern for the Mrs. Rudder's Perimeter Crochet Senegalese Twist. So now, once you've completed your braid pattern, in the very next step, step number three, I will be showing you step by step how to do the Senegalese twist and crochet technique.